have to watch it live. But if you are hopping on here to watch live, please feel free to comment or click on the thread or share this post. We are... Oh, it's so funny. It says jenniferleclair.org on the uh, on the thread. Who is that? We we were we were gonna do like a live stream for one of her deals, and then it um, they said we couldn't live stream it, and so we had to we'll have to take that off. <laughs> so there we go. Edit post, save post. Is it gonna let me do that? All right. So we're live. Hope you guys are having a good day. And let's pull it up and see. So what's on your guys' mind today? Anything cool happening? Anything interesting? Anything uh, great or grand or excellent? No. Trying to keep our gardens alive with all this rain <laughs> and yeah. all the bugs. I'm glad we have so much water in this region. We came from South Texas where, and even I'm originally from Kansas. It is dry. It's only a few steps away from a desert. And South Texas is really dry. And I just think as times get tougher, I'd, I want to make sure I have water. Yeah, water's essential. That was a, a very attractive part of moving here was you guys get, man, it's rained a lot since I've been here. It's they been say, a great year for rain. So there's your weather report for the day. <laughs> and that kind of leads into today's topic. Um, I wanted to talk about like solitude versus like community. And so since people have been quarantining for a long time, and in a lot of places like Texas or even here, Pennsylvania, they're tightening down the lockdown right now in the dead of summer, in the middle of the summer. They're locking it down more, doubling down on the masks, doubling down on the rhetoric. And so my whole talk is kind of how have you guys coped through or, or made your decisions mm -hmm. through the coronavirus mania? And what did you do? What didn't you do? And before we jump into that, I wanted to share something. I rarely watch TV, but I was watching this TV show called Alone from the History Channel. And I just watched season two because it recommended it to me. I like survival stuff. And so in the show, the premise is 10 people, and they're all supposed to be experts in survival. They drop them in Vancouver Island, British Columbia, um, in the autumn, before, right before winter, and they've got to survive. And it's like a torture test, like who can survive the longest? So the winter made it 66 days in really harsh conditions. Well, pretty rough. Right. And watching the show is like a real eye opener because in some ways what they said about it, the people who made it the longest said, man, the hardest part was not the, the, the nature. It was the solitude. It was being alone. And even these really good survival experts said, man, I was not prepared for this. I had no idea how hard it was going to be to be alone. And I read this book, Adrift, and there's a few other books like that about people being alone uh -huh. for long periods of time and surviving and how hard it was. So I'm watching the show and the guy who won, his name's David. He's a missionary who goes to Brazil and he's done a lot of mission work in Brazil. So he's been in the, with the tribal people and very rural places. So I figured, okay, that's a pretty good setup mm -hmm. to have to learn to, yeah. to like bushcraft. And, um, but when I first started watching, of all the 10 people, he did not impress me at all. He didn't seem very tough or very strong. He didn't necessarily have a great attitude right away. And I said, okay, well, I had no, no thoughts of him winning. But as the show progressed, I noticed a trend. Some people would get injured or, you know, they get out or get sick. And there were, but, um, but as it progressed along, I noticed this guy, David, kept just getting a, having a good attitude. He started off a little rough, but as time progressed, he had a good attitude. He had a lot of setbacks. A lot of things went bad, just like with other people. And in some ways, he had more setbacks. Um, but all this to say, he won. And it was just down to two or three people. They tried to like build up the drama of the show, but I could already tell you who was going to win. <laughs> right? Yeah. Why would Why would TV sensationalize something? Um, getting toward the end, the other guy, Larry, who was like neck to neck with him, they were. This guy was tough, man. He was lasting, and he was a survival expert, but he was going crazy. He was full on losing his mind and you could see it. And he was like, just toxic. Everything he said was down talking uh, himself and doubting himself. Uh -huh. And it was like a freight train just getting worse and worse. And he admitted, he's like, I just broke. He's like, I never quit anything in my life, but I just, I, I gave up. I broke. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I thought that was really telling. David, on the other hand, seemed to get better. Now he was a man of faith. Yeah. Unlike Larry and the other guys, he never cursed. He never, not that that's a, a be all end all. He never cussed. He never did any, said anything really nasty. And he did beat himself up a little bit, but he got better over time. Mm -hmm. And at the very end, when they pulled him out, I believed it when he said, I could have gone a few more months because he was getting all this fish. In fact, they have a real special diet for when you're coming off a fast or starvation and uh -huh. they slowly ease you back into food. The doctors look at him and said, you've been eating so well. 
eat whatever you want. You're fine. You no special <laughs> diet for you. Now he did lose some weight, but um, so here's my point. He, he was, and, and I loved at the very end, here's a man of faith, a missionary giving glory to God on this national secular TV program. But the only reason he got to uh, preach a little was because he won. Right. And they're like, well, what, you know, I want to get kind of like a football player. I want to thank you, Jesus, for this victory. Mm-hmm. And, but he got his little 15 minutes to, but to me, the, the, the most important thing was what gave him that mental edge through that solitude. And it was faith in Christ. Yeah. And I know I'm not saying that every one of those shows is won by a born again Christian or anything, but what I saw was really encouraging. So our premise, you were locked down the last three months, started around mid March. And, um, so I know you didn't necessarily have a, a job that got locked down. What was it like for you, Joel? I pretty much stayed life the same, but I, it limited what kind of things I could do. It was being careful when you're going into hardware stores and making sure that at the beginning of it, but overall I, my tight line of work is construction. So it's not been, that was one of the deemed um, essential jobs during the lockdown. And so. you are painting a house. You don't really have to interact with anybody other than to pick up a check at the end, right? Well, I was making contact with mm. homeowners and stuff like that. So, but I wasn't, my job wasn't affected by mm. everything. So, yeah. Cool. So, and then uh, you were part of our core group of video ministry. And so part of how we decide, one of our, crit- our, our decisions, and I stand by this was, I did not, um, social distance from everybody picked a few people Mm -hmm. this little crew here Mm -hmm. and we saw you guys once or twice or even three times a week and that's a minimized risk that's called a calculated risk and i think a a smartly managed risk where he said you know uh, my personal choice was i already live out in the woods i mean (laughs) to our neighbors are trees you cannot see a house from my front porch in any direction we got a lake and we said no we're gonna have a few people Mm -hmm. and my family too my wife and kids we had uh, one other, two other families that we could play with their kids and their kids could play with ours. And I, I thought it was, would be equal to torture to keep a two-year-old and a four-year-old yes. to have no social, could you imagine living in an apartment in New York no. and for three months going no. on now four and you, you're telling your kid, you can't go to a park, you can't no. go to the library. You can't see your friends. You can't see any of your friends. <laughs> no. Guys, this is going to do psychological damage. Yes. And so my, my whole statement for tonight, to put it in a nutshell, is that sometimes the cure is worse than the disease. And I, I'm going to go on record saying, guys, the, what the government is trying to tell you to do in some ways is worse than the coronavirus with a death rate that almost exclusively affects people who are past their their uh, life expectancy, because I think, what is it, 84 years old is life expectancy in America? I'm not sure of the exact number. And everybody's going to get on here and jump on and debate the numbers. That's okay. (laughs) But just generally speaking, almost half the deaths have been in old folks' homes. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, that's kind of like when your kids give up on you, they stick you in an old folks' home. We talked about that one time. I just don't know if I'd feel right about sticking my parents in an old folks' home. No. I'd much, I'd like to, and of course you're going to hold me to this 20, 30 years from now, but I'd like to think that I would take care of them because unless they wanted to go to a retirement community, but, but so most of the people died in a retirement home and there's some shady stuff that went on and they always, the news points out the one guy who was 35 years old who died. And of course right. he didn't have any health conditions or at least that that's what we're told. <laughs> yeah. He may have been shot, right? That may have been he was shot seven <laughs> times, but he died of the coronavirus. Yes, that really happened. Look it up. Um, so we don't know the actual death rate. It gets smaller every time it's revised. But here's my thing. I think there's going to be some worse viruses down the road. There's going to be another no- novel virus that's worse. And so we're going to have to decide what to do. And I'd say make a plan now because um, the, framing, the framers of our Constitution, they understood plague better than you do. Uh, no, they weren't scientists uh, and probably neither are you, but, uh, but they knew plague. They, they knew the realities of it. They paid the price. They had family members die. And yet they still chose freedom. Freedom is still better than whatever options yeah. I've seen floated around on the internet lately. What about you? What was a, what was the quarantine like? Well, um, definitely no solitude. My husband has been home because uh, his job was one of the first shut down because his supplies came from China. Um, we homeschool, so it wasn't a big change school wise. Except it's harder when dad's home because. He's a distraction. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, I, I found I found it harder because I was more concerned over what I saw the government doing. And that's my my that brings my next thesis statement is that my opinion is well one 
that the uh, solitude for a lot of people is worse than the coronavirus, objectively. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And and people are gonna die. I can't. I can't. No, I don't want people to die because I can't stop people dying. The suicide rates are skyrocketing. Yeah. I mean, it's weird, and it's all. I mean, all of it's kind of crazy. But because you could also argue, well, just the fact that people weren't driving on the roads. There's so many thousands of deaths just by people driving. Right. The hospitals have had a much lower uptake of strokes and heart attacks because people are crazy stressed out, getting, you know, it's frantic life. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm saying oh, solitude is worse than currently the coronavirus. And yeah, I, I agree with um, Proverbs that says sometimes you need to hide away for a while right. and let the plague pass over. But an overreaching government is also worse than the coronavirus. And I think no matter how bad this gets, if it's the bubonic plague crossed with measles, crossed with Ebola, freedom is still better than whatever you're recommending or suggesting. Right. I just don't trust the DMV with my life. And what that means is you've ever been to the Department of Motor Vehicles? It is an abysmal experience. It is, it is kind of depressing and sad yes. and they slow and inefficient. And you wonder how they can even unlock the doors in the morning and, and close them at night. It's rough. And that's if you put the government in charge of everything, socialism, Marxism, that's what you're going to get. That's why communism always fails. And in a, it's in a, you take Russia, for, former Soviet Russia, even China, it failed. That's why China adopted some capitalistic principles. But uh, so our talk tonight is the cures. Is it worse than the disease? What are you going to do the next time uh, a real or imaginary virus grips the media, which in turn, and I feel like also the media right now is wagging the dogs, the, the tails wagging the dog, yes. meaning the media is telling government officials what to do. And I'm not saying Trump or his cabinet is being led by the media. They are, but especially at a local level. And that, that's what affects you guys more local media, mm -hmm. local government, yep. state level government. They are watching CNN and Fox and whatever. And they are, I, I believe they're using that to make their decisions a lot more than they say. I, I know they talk to doctors and whatnot. Mm -hmm. They're watching Fauci. They're watching Trump and Don Lemon. And they're like, okay, what are we going to do? And I think they're trying to do their best. But I believe the media is controlling what happens on a state and local level, largely. Right. And well, think, and well, personal oh. lives, too. Personal people watching that stuff. I don't watch it. But I come across it occasionally. And I'm like, this is so toxic. <laughs> it's so toxic. Yeah. I, it's like, I think... Um, the media is non-essential and we should shut down the media for a few months and all of our problems will go away or at least 80 percent of them well and the argument like like with gun control is always even if it saves one life like no you cannot shut the, the economy down economy is lives by the way a yes. lot of people do not understand anything about economics That's true economy is lives you don't get to just ruin businesses and make people homeless who are productive members of society like five months ago that's not progress. That's now it is if you want to destroy America and shut down the economy. And, and I really do. It's not a conspiracy theory. I think it is a legit concern to say there's a large number of people who have officially publicly said, you know, let's burn this whole thing down and start yes. from scratch. Yes. You are my enemy, by the way. Like the Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. But if it comes down to it, like we're, you know, you come to my house like you do to some of these other people. I'm going to defend the Constitution. I swore an oath to do that a long time ago, about 20 years ago. Um, so no, don't be an enemy of our nation, please. And if you want to commit treason, I've got a better idea. Just leave, get out of the country respectfully. I'd love to like talk you out of it, but if you hate America, there's plenty of ways to get out, which is like a very, uh, uh, uh not to change subjects, but when in 2016, a lot of people threatened, like they said on Twitter, I'm going to leave the country if Donald Trump yeah, wins. Sadly, they never do it. None of y'all <laughs> left. I'm just saying, but, but interesting fact about America. I've never heard about anybody making a homemade raft to escape, escape America to go to Cuba or Venezuela or, you know, I just got to get to communist China. Then I'll finally get freedom. Yeah. Well, you'll definitely get communism. You'll definitely get because that's what Marxism is. I think a lot of people think that, oh, it's going to be this beautiful thing like back in the Garden of Eden. In the Bible, it talks about community a lot. You look at Acts chapter mm -hmm. 2, they had community. They all freely chose. That's the key difference. Freely they chose. They chose to like live in a commune, basically. And it was a beautiful thing. But also remember that the Apostle Paul said, a few books of the Bible later, that they were having to send donations to the poor in Jerusalem. So there's, you know, we don't want to make our entire policy off of one story in one chapter of, of the Bible. So I don't want to use, a lot of people are using Acts chapter 2 to say, see, that's communism. No, because it's the freedom of choice is the big right. difference. The, in other words, 
if someone holds a gun to your head and says, give me your wallet, that ain't charity. And, and like taxation is charity at gunpoint, right? Yeah. That, and you say, well, Michael, but we need this money. We need the government subsidies and all this. Well, my argument is God wants to change your heart. And when you're forced to do something, it doesn't change your heart. You can force someone to do something against their will, but God is after your heart. And that's my kind of feeling on this whole coronavirus. A lot of us were forced into solitude yeah. for a while. And there is some good about that. But mm -hmm. also, that's my caution now. It's three months into this. I am cautioning you to reconsider some of those things that you may have believed or agreed with. Just look at new evidence. Don't uh, you know, get away from the echo chamber mm -hmm. of just Fox News or just CNN or just NPR. Those guys are wildly biased and dishonest, intentionally misrepresenting facts and omitting facts. And I mean, the list goes on and on. I find a lot of what we hear on the news is not actual news, it's just opinions. Yes. And when it comes to the virus, there was a lot of mis under miscommunication and misinformation. And so we're... every expert has a different take on it. Yeah. The experts do not all agree. So that's another lie that's really being proliferated big time right now um, is that for one, the facts all agree, the experts all agree. Well, guys, this is not a toothbrush commercial. Nine out of de 10 dentists do not agree that Crest Complete is a good toothpaste. And nine out of 10 experts do not agree with Dr. Fauci or whoever you're clinging to today because it suits your argument. Um, we were talking earlier about Pixar. Pixar mm -hmm. Entertainment, and that, that guy who, um, let's see, what was his name? Ed, the president of, of Pixar, Ed Catmull. I'm saying his name wrong. Anyway, he started Pixar, and what I loved is I'm reading his book right now, Creativity Incorporated, where he said um, that data is important. Data, the numbers, the, the modeling, they do a lot of that. They crunch a lot of numbers. They're a computer company. Mm -hmm. But he said, you've got to be careful. Because he said, that's not the main thing. That's not even the most thing. He says, that's one of many things. And data cannot drive all your decisions. Right. There's many ways to look at it, at that data. He said that it was you could get the wrong take on it. Yeah. Well, no, that's, that's it. So data is one thing. And so right now what we have is a lot of scientific experts, and God bless them, they're doing the best they can, they're... They're making policy decisions. They're dictating policy or at least attempting to dictate policy or saying things where, okay, hey, I'm a scientist, so I get to tell you what to do. That's not how it works in America. Our, our leaders, they have to make policymakers, Congress, and then sometimes the Supreme Court jumps in to, to make sure it was done right. Mm -hmm. But policymakers make decisions. Experts give opinions. But, but um, I, one thing that scares me, too, is you see doctors becoming de facto government agents, getting right. to make policy, like on the fly decisions about who gets a pass, who doesn't, who gets a doctor's note. And the people have heard about getting pulled over and like, oh, what's your reason? What's your medical excuse? Well, this is not 1940s Germany. Where's your papers? Do you have permission to be on the road right now? If it's a privilege, it's not a right. And if it's a right, it's, it's you know, not something you need to ask for or you may have to demand or fight for. But so we're in this position now where we really have to make some decisions that you stick with. There's always going to be lives lost. People are going to die. Now they're saying, oh, coronavirus might be airborne. <laughs> okay. So then how does the lockdown help that? Right. And I think some people really are trying to play God in all of this. Mm -hmm. They're ignoring all, all of the, the reality that do you believe in God? Here's my question. The church is the healing place. Jesus healed people. If you don't believe that Jesus heals, then how could you believe that he rose from the dead? If you don't believe he rose from the dead, then how can you believe he is God or that he can save you? And if he can't save you, then you need to find another God because, uh, guys, Jesus is the only way and he is our healer. And in 1918, during the Spanish flu, what did we have? We had churches turned into hospitals mm -hmm. like Good Samaritan, like yep. Samaritan's Purse did. They went to New York, set up a hospital for free, didn't ask for a penny. Locals came out and showered them with support and love and food. And politicians started grandstanding and telling yeah. them, oh, you said something we don't like about LGBT people two years ago. And so tried to aggressively force them out. And when Samaritan's Purse finished their job and went home, oh, they said some nasty things against them. It's like, guys, you're going to have to make some decisions. The, the Constitution is good. It's real. You have not come up with a better idea that I've seen, and I read a lot. I'm reading your articles. I'm watching the news, different sources. I have not seen anything floated that's better than freedom. I think the average person is. Uh, we're just going to have to trust each other and love each other and 
you have nations like Japan did not lock down. Right. Well, they say, oh, but they're way more well-behaved. Granted, uh, you know, <laughs> places, you know, okay, here's another pet peeve. China is not reporting any numbers at all. They've totally, it originated in Wuhan, China. That's why mainstream media called it the Wuhan virus until they were told that was racist. <laughs> and they're not allowed to think for themselves. So, um, well, then what happens? It's starts in China, they don't report numbers. Now all of a sudden, America has the worst death rate. America's the worst. Man, just the hatred against America. Right. Yeah. Uh, by the way, it started in China. Billions more people than America. You think their death rate's not worse than ours? Then you're not using your brain. You need to go get your head <laughs> checked at the doctor's office because you're not doing very well on the logic and reason thing. America is not the worst. Not by death rate. Not by any measuring stick. In fact, America's probably doing if not the best, one of the best nations at dealing with this right now. Mm -hmm. And and you're getting mad at whoever didn't wear a mask or guys, you're just going to have to decide if you want freedom. That, it's, it's, a, it's a tough thing. It's like a double-edged sword. If I allow freedom, then something bad could happen to me. But if I don't allow uh, freedom, then something definitely bad is going to happen. <laughs> it's like freedom. It's like freedom of speech. Yeah. The constitution has freedom of speech, but yet I don't like what somebody might say. Well, don't I have the power to change the channel? or to look away or to ignore them or to speak against what they said. But yet I always see groups one minute they're for free speech. And then someone says something they don't like with a bigger pulpit than them. Yep. And then all of a sudden they're like, yeah, free speech, but that's actually hate speech. Well, guys, that's a slippery slope. At what point is it, you know, is it either everything's okay or nothing's okay. And once you start making little exceptions for what counts as free speech and one doesn't. At some point your speech is going to be considered hate speech. And then, well, Christians, we know them. See, and here's the thing. There's a lot of protests going on, a lot of riots, a lot of movements going on. But let me tell you, the worst suffering right now, Christians are being persecuted more than any other group. Mm -hmm. Bring me the data. 150,000 Christians last year murdered for their faith. Not for anything else. It was not just political. This is hundreds of thousands of Christians over worldwide the years. Worldwide or? That's a worldwide figure. Yeah. It varies between about 100 and about 150,000. And that's all that we know and can verify. Mm -hmm. If that's all that we know and can verify. How many, how many <clears throat> is not verified? Like in China, they say that something crazy like 20 or 30 million phones mm -hmm. deactivated. Mm -hmm. early on in the corona, yep. back in like March or April. So if 20 or 30 million phones that were turned on yesterday are deactivated today, three months later have not been reactivated. Well, and all those protests that were going on in China, all those kind of disappeared. At they the get squashed. Of well, even in Hong corona, Kong. Were those some of those phones that deactivated? And, and those mm. protesters just disappeared. So Christians are being slaughtered wholesale around the world right now. And uh, Christians are being persecuted in America. They're losing their jobs. They're being assaulted by a weaponized media and a cancel weaponized culture, the cancel culture, but also lawsuits. They're being, and, and you know, the Bible says in the last days, lawlessness will increase. I read that a long time ago and thought, oh, that means there'll be criminals doing crime. What I didn't understand is lawmakers being lawless, mm -hmm. anarchy in the courtrooms, the DA of St. Louis, uh, and I'll get to wh why this matters in a minute. The DA of St. Louis is on record that 23% of arrests and charges brought have been prosecuted, 23% last year. So they're refusing to process criminals. That means refusing to do their job, wow. violating their oath to the Constitution, violating their commitment to the people to uphold law and order. And I'm all for mercy mm -hmm. and grace and a second chance, right. but you can't just indiscriminately start releasing a bunch of people to make a political statement if you're yeah. in a job like, what if a prison guard just did that? Well, I don't believe this, so I'm going to let you guys out of prison right now. Go ahead and walk out. That's anarchy. Right. Well, going after people for not wearing masks, but then allowing people to destroy buildings and pull down statues, those are crimes, but they're not, they're being allowed to do it. That's lawlessness. Our lawmakers and law enforcers aren't upholding the law. I, I read a great article. And you guys, if you want to wear a mask, cool. If you don't, well, again, if your mask is so great, then it should help you. But you're not wearing a mask, so you're going to kill grandma. Or if you're sick, you should wear a mask. There are. I think you should stay home if you're sick, yeah. if well, at all possible. Right. If you have to go out. Or say say, say you're, you're tending to your, your elderly grandmother. You tend to you know elderly people. But from what I'm hearing is the masks that we're wearing now don't actually do anything anyway well a good n95 mask you've probably used respirators or ventilators at, uh, on a paint job a good n95 mask 
exhales pretty hard, mm -hmm. meaning it's more by the intake. So in fact, some N95 masks are banned in, in certain metro areas. I don't have the, the exact, so there's it's all those masks, out. It goes like a plunger, like, uh -huh. a, like a snorkel almost, a one-way snorkel mm -hmm. where you can breathe in, but boom, it blows it out. So what does that do? So now you're wearing a mask, so it's filtering on the way in, but when you blow it out, it's all of your spittle and particles your could, could potentially come yes. out. So, and I think again, people want to cut God out of the equation. And that's what we're here to talk mm -hmm. about Jesus. Guys, the mask is not going to protect you from the judgment of God. Whoa, there's, there's my, uh, that's the mic drop moment. God is real. He is really a judge. He's the only God who could be called a father. He's the only God who be, can be called a friend. And he's the only God who's coming back again. But the judgments of God, you, you don't get a, you don't get to negotiate with that. You don't get a lawyer when you die and, and go before the great throne of judgment. You have to answer for all of your deeds, whether good or evil. So do good. Do good deeds, help people, help the poor, the orphan, the widow, the foreigner, the prisoner. Uh, stop killing babies. I read a great article in Babylon Bee today that said, nation that kills 3,000 babies a day feels morally superior to slave owners from 200 years ago. Yeah. And you're like, whoa, because we want to tear down all the statues, unless they're Democrat statues, we don't tear those down. But they're even tearing down abolitionist statues and stuff, though. Frederick Douglass got torn yeah. down on the anniversary of a famous speech. Frederick Douglass was a good guy. I don't know why you tore down his statue. That was a dumb idea. Um, Did his black life not matter? Wow, wow. I, I mean, <laughs> these are questions that uh, inquiring minds want to know. Guys, and two, like, I love you and Black Lives Matter. Yes, it does. And that's a great slogan and a great mission. But let's go to their website real quick and see what they say. Because whether it was started as a good idea or whether it's been hijacked by a group of terrorists, here's where we're at right now. We're at a place right now where the website for Black Lives Matter has some really nasty extremely anti-Christian stuff, some extremely mm -hmm. anti-American rhetoric. Anti-family. Anti-family, talking about bringing down the nuclear family, uh, all this weird cisgender, which is a made-up word, uh, but all this crazy stuff. Go on their website, see what they stand for. It is not just about police brutality. And yeah, I agree. Police, police brutality is bad. I don't want to be brutalized by a cop. I don't want <laughs> any of my friends to be attacked by a cop. But burning it all down is not the solution. A lot of these cities that fired the cops just went and hired private security, which was mostly cops. So there is some, there's some insanity to this. Like we have to have, there has to be logic and reason. Uh, no, we don't want to burn it all down. I don't know. What, what, do you, what is the solution? Because we're talking, I guess we're talking about a lot of subjects all at once. Well, here's my first solution. Koinonia, community. If you have a healthy community around you, they're going to help help soften those rough edges you have. When you say crazy stuff on Facebook, a lot of that you wouldn't say to my face. And I right. know you wouldn't because I talk to you a lot in person. <laughs> you wouldn't say that to my face because you're not that tough. But the <laughs> point is, man, I'll tell you one of the meanest things anybody ever said to me. I was, I was working a retail store and this guy was upset that something didn't go. I, was, I don't even remember what it was, but and we have a policy and we had to uphold the policy. Mm -hmm. And then he was getting kind of belligerent, like, dude, you got to leave the store. It's time for you to get out and kick rocks, you know? And, he, and he's like, okay, he decided he was going to leave because he couldn't win this thing. And on his way out, he's like, F you, buddy, you know, or something like that, some really dumb thing. But he was making sure scooting out the door while he said that. He was, <laughs> he was hightailing it out of there. And I, I hate you, and I'm going to curse at you. Yeah. That's the internet. Yeah. I'm, I'm safe behind my computer. I can say whatever I want. Well, guys, part of us, we're, part of y'all, all of us are responsible for firing up the people who are willing to get crazy in the streets and being a keyboard warrior and saying, oh, burn it all down. Did you see that? Um, that, oh man, I have to share this one. So there's a guy who worked for the NFL and he, man, logic is such a wonderful thing. He, he has this post and it's basically like, Oh, Black Lives Matter, burn it all down, you know, teach these MFers what's what. And he just was like all egging them on. And then the mob came to his house. Oh, wow. <laughs> and all of us, I don't know why it, his tone changed. <laughs> and, and I'm trying to find the exact quote. I've got it here somewhere, but it, it was just so not funny. Funny, but not funny. Like it, right. life is either a comedy or a tragedy, I've realized. And, um, where did it go? I hope I can find it. I just want to share this with you guys. Is this it? They just so this is Chris Martin Palmer of the NBA, who is a, who is a man of color. And after saying "burn it all down," that's a direct quote. Real uh, bravado, brave guy. You think you'd be brave? Here's his quote: 
They just attacked our sister community down the street. It's a gated community, and they tried to climb the gates. They had to beat them back, then destroyed a Starbucks, and are now in front of my building. Get these animals beep out of my neighborhood. <laughs> Go back to where you live. <laughs> I thought I thought he wanted it all burned down. Where is the tolerance? <laughs> uh, gated community. Wow, privilege much? If if animals, that's racist. Calling people animals, destroying a Starbucks. I guess we know where he gets his four dollar lattes. <laughs> So guys, pick your position. I'm just asking for a little bit of consistency. And I know you got problems with me or problems with us in general, but I'm not trying to burn this thing down. So let's let's start with minor uh, nuisance or small complaint versus whatever your problem is. It's not Christians being gunned down in Nigeria right now as yeah. we speak, because that's what I'm having to deal with on my end. So let's keep our problems in perspective. St. Louis, we were talking about St. Louis and the terrorist DA a uh, district attorney who is refusing to prosecute crimes for a political agenda. Let's go to St. Louis for a sec. You're familiar with that couple, the millionaire couple? Yes. I actually saw a an interview with him, sure. and uh, he's no joke. I mean, he might look kind of pansy in his pretty pink <laughs> It was shirt. a very pink shirt, yes, and his wife <laughs> had a little pocket rocket. Yes. And what type of lawyers are they? Because they oh, he's personal injury lawyer. So, so, uh, and this is why the story is so good. I was he trying to... knows his stuff. Mm -hmm. He, he oh, yeah. did not get pushed around by Don that Lemon. Don Lemon or whoever it <laughs> Such was. Such a good interview. He doesn't it like to was. interview people. So if, if, if Don Lemon ever wants to interview me, I'm standing by this. I'm just going to get a cardboard cutout of my head and shoulders and a, holding a sign that says yell at me. So when I don't get my turn to talk, I'm just going to hold up the cardboard cutout. And they'll be like, what are you doing? Well, what's going on? Well, you, you don't actually want to talk to me, so I'm going to give you this cardboard cutout. You can just yell at me. Because yeah. when CNN interviews people, they're not really wanting to interview. They ask one or two gotcha questions like, mm -hmm. like how does it feel to be racist? <laughs> Do your families know that you're a horrible person? I mean, they ask these ridiculous, like, teenage questions. So, yeah, but, but, he really stood up to it. He, put he did. The, he put them in place. It and, and look, it's easy to hate personal injury lawyers. Here's why they made it. Because, by the way, guys, here's the preface. If you've been watching the news, a lot of people have uh, had guns and ARs in front of their neighborhood or in front of their houses. Yes. Mm -hmm. When protesters march by, they are standing there strapped to the teeth. Yeah. And it ain't just one guy. It's usually like 10 young military age men. And I wouldn't want to mess with them. I don't care if you have 100 protesters. The last thing you want is bullets flying. Right. So the St. Louis couple, why did they make these guys the center of the universe? You have to ask yourself. The media They're wealthy. has a godlike power. Well, not just wealthy. They have like a $10 million mansion. Look ah. at the size of the bricks on that house. I mean, this is a, <laughs> a mansion. It's gorgeous. Oh, I saw some pictures so inside. Beautiful. And here's the preface. Yes, they did bust the gate down. That's criminal trespassing and mm -hmm. probably a felony if it's over a certain value. Mm -hmm. So they commit a felony. By the way, when someone's committing a felony, I'm not giving you the benefit of a doubt. I live on a private road with a no trespassing sign. It's my private driveway. If you kick the gate down and come down my driveway... It ain't going to end well. I'm promising you. You're not going to get a we warning. We have castle, castle doctrine here too. Yeah. We can defend our and, homes. And I don't want to defend my home. I want to be left alone and chill and love my wife and kids. Uh, Amen. And that's normal. That's reasonable what I'm saying. That's that's normal. What you're saying is not normal if you're – because it's so many people that I thought had a little bit of sanity saying burn it all down. Oh, this is reasonable. The, the rioters mm -hmm. are reasonable and this is only a natural consequence. They try yeah. to drag Martin Luther King into it. Like, oh, really, Martin Luther King, he, he made a couple of offhanded quotes later in life that they cling to. And again, forget his whole entire life dedicated to Jesus peace. and yeah. peace and, and bridge building and nonviolent protest. They take a couple things he said, make that the center of the universe, which is deception, by the way. That's a twisting. When you take mm -hmm. one little quote that he said and make it pretend like that's all he said, no, he doesn't agree with you. And you he's dead now. That's why it's easy to use him. But... Don't get it twisted. He does not support what's happening right now. He would have never supported all this craziness. So the St. Louis couple, they're rich. They're white. They're a little bit overweight. They have a monster mansion. That's why this was – the media is very evil. They're very deceptive, mm -hmm. explicitly evil. I believe they are an anti uh, – or a false prophet. Like the Bible yeah. talks about a false oh, prophet. Definitely. I think yeah. they're the biggest false prophet that has ever existed. They're uh, behaving like terrorists. So you take this family, minding their own business, eating in dinner – and they're personal injury lawyers, which are easy to hate. 
These people bust their gate down, and some of them were armed. I saw the footage. They never show that on CNN. Right. Several of them were armed. One had what looked like a, a rifle, may have been a microphone stand or something. But if you're holding that, and it looks like a rifle, and other people have weapons, they're threatening them, threatening their dogs, threatening to burn their house down. And the lady's standing there with her gun. She's terrified. He's terrified. That's why they made that the center of the universe. Because this is a classism. It's not just about black versus yep. white. It's about have versus have not. The I pro don't think it's about black versus white at all, honestly. Really, I think it's more classism. It's a, more of a communist move of... Yeah. Now, they're using anything they can. I think they're using... Yeah. They're, they are, I believe the media is, is trying to instigate a race war. I think right. they're doing... And it, yes, because they think... Like a, and I don't think that's going to work. I mean, we are in a true civil war right now. But guys, Marxism is the philosophy of greed... And, and that's all there is to it. A famous man once said that, change my mind. Uh, that, that's what it is. If you think that collective ownership and the government should own and control all the ways and means over my dead body, not in this lifetime, not in the next. I'm all for hippie communes. Go start one. Go buy a few acres. Where's the, where's the mad rush on, on, you know, there's some cheap acres out here. You can go get two or $3,000 together. I know you can do it. Go sell your Prius, get a few acres, and make a yurt out in the foothills of North Dakota. Nobody's stopping you. But go to these guys' neighborhood, kick down the gate. There's criminal trespassing, felony intimidation. You're yelling and shouting at these people, walking up their, their driveway. They walked up their steps, too. So, so this is not the sidewalk. By the way, I can own a sidewalk if I want. If I wanted to build a sidewalk at my house, I could do that. And you can't just walk on it because it's the sidewalk. <laughs> if you bust down someone's gate and come up to their house... You don't want to go there. That's We don't want people to die. See, that's the thing. I think a lot of people in this Marxist camp, I think they want blood. Yes. They don't have Christ. And so I, I want to be the voice of reason here. I want Christians to stand up. Uh, I believe silence is violence. But I'm talking to you, Christians. The silent majority is cowardice. So if you're in the silent majority right now, you are a coward. And I'm saying, Revelation, what, chapter 21, cowards have no inheritance in Christ. So my challenge to you today is speak up, stand up, do something more than words, help some people, um, disciple some people. I want you to do things too. But if you're going to get mad at this St. Louis, I know we're a little bit late on the draw. We were going to do this last week, but it's still something that the air needs to be cleared. Mm -hmm. You talk about any other place of what's going on right now. Do you know what happened in St. Louis? This family, you think they had no right to be fe uh, fearful? You think they had no right? I mean, that's, that's insanity. You, you don't have logic in your head if you're saying these guys didn't have a right to be afraid. They're on their front porch. She's got mustard on her shirt. They were just eating dinner. Right. And I think they really did fear for their lives. I'm huh. shocked that they didn't fire into the, or uh, that there wasn't some sort of, mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm glad there wasn't. Oh, bless you. So that's part of why I left the big city. That's why I moved down yeah. the country because I, I want to avoid confrontation. Amen. The, the older I get, I don't want to fist fight people. I don't want to... No do anything like that <clears throat> so what do you guys think this is where we're at right now and oh by the way i believe the solitude is what led to this rioting in the streets i don't think it was george floyd's death that may have been the spark or the catalyst mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but um yeah lack of community desperation because you haven't worked in months you know what the worst thing you can do to someone is in solitary confinement in prison is, is, is leave them alone. I mean, yeah. so they say the worst thing in jail is solitary confinement. They say there's nothing worse in prison than to be left alone. So there's limits on how long you can confine someone in solitude. But yet they were forcing all of us into solitary confinement. confinement. And, and what is that? You got people, young people, who had almost no chance of getting coronavirus, know the asymptomatic spread, that's a red herring, that's a myth, that is BS. You cannot shut down the country because asymptomatic uh, is, is a risk. Guys, it's a risk. It, I gotta get a microscope to see how small of a risk it is. I agree, it is a risk. We don't shut down the economy and, and strangle our nation because of asymptomatic transfer, like in other words, because you know, like say you get the flu, you don't quite know you have the flu yet, you can pass it on. And then maybe right after you've had the flu, you can maybe pass it on. What are you gonna do? My mother-in-law has a friend whose husband had been dry. He was an alcoholic. He'd been clean for three or four years. Wow. During this, he, he broke. He fell off the wagon. And he is having a terrible time now. Um, fully alcoholic again. Apparently this is something happening across the country 
because you need community. You need people. Even even Christians have been hearing, oh, we, we are the church. We don't need to go to church. But I need my people. I need you guys. Well, and it's not either or. I it's, get depressed it's, mm-hmm. when I find myself wanting to withdraw when I start getting depressed. But I've learned that if I start feeling that depression, maybe I should go on a hike with a friend or go visit Joel or something. <laughs> you know, you, We are social beings. We, we were created to have social interactions. You cannot, and we're not robots, we're not machines. You can't just lock us all in solitary confinement. That's a government control thing. Yeah. You wanna make the conspiracy theorists right? That, 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 that's what they were talking about a long time before this. Lock everybody down in their house. Uh, man, it's crazy. It's easier oh. to take you out one by one too. Well, and that's the thing about community. It's here, you think I'm talking about, I get accused of all sorts of stuff. This is for your safety. You know the Nazis said that all the time? This is for your safety. Loading Jews onto a cattle car, to take them to Auschwitz, this is for your safety. All the atro- atrocities, mm-hmm. they kept saying, this is for your safety. They said that to pastors too. But what I'm saying is for your safety, stick together with your tribe. Find your group of people, stick together. Don't don't be a punk and don't, let it, don't get taken out like a punk. Stick with your people, stay together, and your community will protect you. You have uh, people who, and you look at the research, People who have a good, healthy community live longer. People who are in mm-hmm. church on average are happier and live longer yep. because it makes sense. That's the way we were created. So don't let them shut down your church. You have a right, a freedom of assembly, freedom of religion. That is when they say in California that you can't sing in church, they're violating the Constitution. You can have a unique law in California, but you cannot violate the Constitution. And there's one eighth of the population living in California. And they are trying to shut down the church. They're not going after, oh, you know, the, the, the head shops are still open. The drug stops are sh- were still open. The porn shops were still open. I could have a long list. You can protest. You know, pro- oh, but remember, the news told me that protesting doesn't isn't a risk for coronavirus. <laughs> but singing in church is. Well, you know, you just got to trust what the media says. Yeah. Um, so, so use your heads. Think for yourself. Don't be a sheeple, as they say. But, um, but God, but Jesus is a good shepherd, so I'll follow him. We want to, to be shrewd as serpents and gentle as doves. We want to turn the other cheek. We don't want violence. We want peace. But uh, I don't want Orwellian peace where war is peace, you know, right. hate is love. And that's what we're getting from the TV right now, very mm-hmm. much George Orwellian. Yes, I'll, it I'll, is. We'll close up here in a sec, but I, I want to share. I, I did a post like uh, last week or something, and it went, it blew up where – I showed a graph from the CDC. Do you remember this one? Yes. yes and yes. the death rate's like this. It is yeah. like it a, is down, out. a downhill slope on a ski resort. And so it's very low. The death rate is very yeah, low right now. Extremely. I posted that along with a quote from Dr. By the way, Dr. Ron Paul, the medical doctor, who's also a, a policymaker. Mm-hmm. Do you know that's a unique distinction? To be a high-level, successful career politician and a medical doctor who's practiced a lot. That makes him smarter than most of y'all. I, I like him. So that's another thing. Humility is largely lacking from this discussions. You got to sometimes consider that someone knows more than you about the thing that matters mm-hmm. most. Everybody becomes an expert on Facebook about whatever's happening. Have you noticed that? But but I digress. <laughs> Ron Paul says, you watch the TV. Back in January, February, March, it was all about the, the case, how many cases, how many deaths, how many hospitalizations. But mostly they were focusing on the death count, hospitalization count. Mm-hmm. And there, it was like they were showing... NFL stats or March right. Madness, they yes. were, it was like a game. They were just, oh, here's the death toll. Here's the death rate. Still like that on our local, one of our local Facebook pages. Yeah. But <laughs> all of a sudden the mainstream media, what most people watch most of the time, your big name media mm-hmm. channels, instead of all about the murders, well, sorry, <laughs> the deaths, the deaths were plummeting. So they pivoted in June to being, oh, the cases, cases, cases. Cases mm-hmm. are going up. Well, the death toll went down, but what went up in that same time? The testing went up. Guys, when you institute a new test for a new novel coronavirus, it takes some time to roll out. But when it started rolling out, what happened? It became readily available. Anybody could get the test pretty much if they wanted to. Cases are going up. No, testing went up. And antibodies, having if I have the antibodies and I take the test, that does not mean I have the coronavirus and I'm a boogeyman that you need to be scared of now. Well, and apparently, if you have one of the other coronaviruses or had... It's close enough to COVID that you might show positive for it anyway. Wow. And there's, yeah. a, and, and I hate to get into any sort of conspiracy theory or something that can't be validated, but I'm getting a lot of anecdotal messages on Facebook from people saying, uh, here's a common story. I've, I've heard this from enough people where 
hey, I went to go take a test, and at the last second I changed my mind, or I, the line was really long, so mm-hmm. I left. But I, I, keep, I he see a lot of those. And then I'm getting now they send me back a message a day or two later that says I was tested positive, and I can't hmm. I can't verify that, guys. But what I can say is this: there were a lot of dishonesty uh, early on. It's it's like um, a simple economics. If you incentivize bad behavior, yes. you're going to get more bad behavior. And so the media needs to stop putting a spotlight on these protests, stop making crazy people famous. You know, with um, mass shootings, mm-hmm. they, uh, the media got together and made a deal. We're not going to make these people famous anymore. You know who Dylan Harris and Eric Klebold are? Mm-hmm. Who are they? They were the guys that did Columbine shooting. Yes. A lot of people know that because they were on the TV constantly. So they say, well, a lot of people watched them and wanted to mimic it. And so they, they said, I want my 15 minutes of fame, even if I have to go out in blazes. Even if my 15 minutes of fame is when I'm in jail or dead. Right. So what now the media is evil and deceitfully doing is making people famous who are doing the craziest, most extreme things. They can take a post a protest with 300 people and using harsh camera angles make it look like 3,000 people. Mm-hmm. They can take a little riot and make it look like the world's ending. Yeah. And, and a lot of bad stuff has happened, so I don't want to minimize that. You know 61 Secret Service agents were injured in one day? Yes. Secret I Service know. agents? Yeah. So, man, police lives, do we care about those guys? Because yes. they are getting brutalized right now. These are guys just like you and me who are guys wanting to do a good job. Most of them are not horrible, evil people. It is a small percent that I think are, are to blame for the biggest problems, and we need to get rid of that. But you can never get – look, here's, a, here's a, a pro tip from a guy who knows a lot of cops. I got a lot of friends in law enforcement. If they're going to take someone to jail and that person does not want to go to jail, sometimes they fight back. <laughs> fight or flight, right? And if you're getting physically assaulted every day, it's a tough job. So free advice is, I don't want you to get killed. I don't want you to get injured. If you're in a bad situation, you'll have your day in court. You know, there's a lot of, your chances are better there. That's all I'm saying. I realize there's still injustice in court even. Right. And I just talked about injustice in the court systems. But I'd rather be judged by 12 than carried by six. I'd rather have my day in court than, than, than any of the other alternatives. And, uh, and guys, I love you. I hope you see that I care about you and I want good things to happen. We want you to, to live a good life, but you got to be there to live that good life. And a lot of stuff that I'm seeing, I don't want to get into some of this other stuff that don't listen to godlessness. Get, get Christ. Get Christian friends. People who believe the Bible, that's a novel idea. People who love Jesus, who are, who are making a sincere effort toward Jesus. They don't have to be super saints, but try to find a few people that are in your neighborhood or community that are close enough where you can get together with them, preferably within walking distance, and start, start doing things together. Get together. The Bible says they got together daily. Try to get together three, four, five times a week with real believers in person, and that could be your little corona quarantine family if you want. And there's very low risk in having a little group. And go do yeah. things. Go do, do acts of justice. Help the poor. Help the needy. Be willing to take a risk for something good. The crazy people out there taking a risk to burn it all down. So you should be willing to go out and take a risk to feed the homeless or to help people get tested if that's what you feel you should be doing. So give it up to God. And we love you, but we've got to stop this madness. We're in a civil war. But it, it could be minimized. It can. It does not have to be as bad as it could be. Right. And it's up to us to take a stand. And one is shutting down the BS and the nonsense. And two is doing something proactive. The reason I'm doing these videos with you guys is I hate responding to a bunch of stuff on Facebook. Mm-hmm. It feels very reactive. It feels yeah. defensive. And I, I, I don't know. I don't think it comes across well. Right. But when we make a video, it can be so much more dynamic. And you can hear my tone of voice. And you can still accuse me of whatever you want, but I hope people will, will see that we love them, we care. I mean, that's my pat, that's my heart for this, because we can do something good. So, any closing thoughts before we pray? Any quarantines? Man, it's rough. I know it's out there. So here's my free advice: turn off the TV, turn off the Facebook. I know I, I'll have a, a less viewers. Turn off Facebook. Give yourself a month or two break. Yeah. Go out in the woods. Do whatever you can do. Maybe move out of the city. Maybe it's time to give up because, hey, if you can work from home, you could go. You could work from home somewhere else. I think it's rough in the big cities right now. So unless God has called you to be there, my advice is get out and quickly. And uh, it's not worth it. The richest man in the world, it's not worth it. You can't, you know, you can't take it with you when you're dead. So we love you guys. Any any parting thoughts? Are you no. good? You're good? No, I think we... Yeah, it's a tough one. So we're going to keep sticking with this and we'll see you guys next time. 
And I love you. And we'll just close in prayer real quick. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for these people who are watching. We pray that you give us wisdom and revelation and that you give us the mind of Christ, that we can help other people find you and find the peace and joy that's only found in you, that we can found, find salvation in you. We pray that many will come to know you because of these terrible times, that you can work all these things together for good for those who love you and who are called according to our purpose. We don't deserve your love. We don't deserve your favor, but you give it to us so freely. You, you're such a good father. You're so extravagant in your love. So we just pray that people will repent, turn from their sins, stop living crazy, and come to you for help and see you as a father and see you as a good daddy, as Abba Father. And we thank you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, good night.